Welcome back to beyoungministry.blogspot.com to another blog and to another podcast. Today we're in Luke chapter 5 verses 7 through 11 which reads, So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. That's Luke chapter 5, verses 7 through 11. Peter starts to pull the net in. And he can't even handle it. There are so many fish. He yells to James and John, and they come out to help him. They end up filling two whole boats full of fish to the point where they were sinking. The Lord Jesus blew Peter's mind by demonstrating his power over something that Peter thought he knew more about than the Lord Jesus. In much the same way, he works in our lives. The Lord Jesus reveals a little bit more of himself every day. And we, like Peter, are slowly going deeper into fellowship with the Lord. It's scary, and yet it's so rewarding and meaningful. He is truly the Lord of everything, including that which we think we are experts about. Peter has seen other miracles, but this miracle is unique. It's personal because it's about fish. Peter had spent his lifetime studying fishology. We often think we are better at running our lives than the Lord. We get upset with him when he doesn't give us our desired definition of life, only to discover his is far better. We often say, I prayed about it, but the Lord didn't answer. Oh, he answered. He just was not in line with our will and our prayers. In response to this miracle, the eyes of Peter opened. and We find him flat on his face in front of the Lord Jesus saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I'm a sinful man. Throughout Scripture, when God reveals himself to people, The response is that we end up on our faces. The person who is growing in arrogance is not growing in a personal relationship with the Lord. I think of the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 6, 1 through 5. He goes into the temple. God gives him a vision of himself. Isaiah sees the Lord high and lifted up. Isaiah ends up flat on his face. Yeah. And he says, woe to me, I'm ruined, for I'm a man of unclean lips. According to verse 10, the Lord Jesus then said, don't be afraid, from now on, you will fish for people. In every instance in scripture, when God pulls back the veil and asks us into his presence, he says, do not fear. The theme of fear is important in Luke's gospel. Seven different times, seven different times, Luke records some revelation of the mystery and majesty and power of the Lord God, after which God speaks in some way and says, do not fear. The first is when the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and called her to be the one who would carry the Son of God in her womb. He looked at Mary and said, do not be afraid. Next, on a Judean hill, on a Judean hillside, the shepherds were blown away by the angelic chorus and announcement of Christ's birth, terrified by the overwhelming majesty of God, and God's voice was heard by them. Do not be afraid. And there are five other times in the Gospel of Luke when His invitation of grace simply says, do not fear, including this incident in Peter's life. 
There's always a progression in God's revelation of himself to us. He has in mind to be uh, that way because it has to be that way. In other words, God has to slowly let us see him. Of course, with our eyes, I mean our hearts. And it has to be a process. We can't handle it all at once. And we must keep in mind that it's a process. It does not happen overnight, and God is not in a hurry. God graciously continues to give us more and more revelation of himself and a deeper understanding of him. And, of course, everything else emanates out of that. That's why I believe our theology is the most important thing in our lives. He does all of this so that we might obey him in an increasingly deeper level. This is why the Lord Jesus said to Peter at the end of verse 10, From now on you will fish for people. In the same way, the Lord Jesus filled those nets beyond comprehension with fish. He is saying to Peter, If you follow me and trust me, you will be someone through whom I will continue to bring in a harvest of souls. You will catch people that I'm going to put into your life. Yes, I'm doing the work and you're, I'm allowing you to be a part of it, but I'm going to do what I promised I would do. You can trust me to accomplish it. According to verse 11, So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Obedience is responding to the revelation the Lord gives. It's our starting point as his friends who follow him. What we do is follow some pattern that we think is right for a Christian, and we end up fulfilling someone else's call. Now, granted, there are things that all Christians ought to and ought not to do as followers of Christ, but when that's our focus, we end up getting trapped. We get trapped into robotically following our ideas instead of his, or the ideas of others that are placed on us. I have found his way is always more radical than mine and subsequently more exciting. Finally, in verse 11, Peter and his buds pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. I'd say our number one God in America is comfort. We like the easy life. This is not and will not be the case with the Lord Jesus. His idea is an adventure. It is exciting and it is scary, but it's worth it. To see him do his thing through our lives is the greatest thing ever. And who knows, we may be tackled by several people in heaven when we get there because God used us to help them get there. My friends, I trust this podcast and this blog are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, send me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.